All right. Remember to do that this time. I've forgotten in past in there. All right. So with that, I will stop my share. And Bethy, you can go about hopefully take over and you'll be able to share and have all your stuff going with that. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Let me get this sharing. Let's see. Um, let's go from the beginning. All right. Um, can everybody, I assume everybody can see my screen. Um, all right. So yeah, so I'm Bethy Chapla. Um, I've been a den leader probably for, I'd say like the last six years now. Um, I currently have 16 scouts between a lion's den and a weevil den. Um, so lots of planning every year and, and lots going on. So, um, we keep our, we keep our kids pretty busy. Um, so moving on from there, Pat was kind of talking about um, all the changes that are coming up and, and everything that's going to be going on um, this following year. And so before I get into um, this, uh, this coming winter and spring and what you can do there, I always kind of like to talk about what I do um, to make sure my year is kind of set. Um, and so everything that I have going on this winter and spring I, I actually already kind of planned earlier on in the year. Um, and so what we do as a PAC is we actually have a PAC committee planning meeting um, every uh, July where we all get together and we pick as a PAC some of our themes for every month. Um, so we actually line, outline our entire year and we pick our themes that we're going to focus on. And actually next year, as Pat was kind of showing you, um, the program is really going to be a lot more streamlined between um, each of the uh, levels, each of the dens um, or each of the ranks. And so it's going to be actually a lot easier to pick your themes um, per month. And so the reason I talk about that now is because as a pack, since we've picked our themes, we've actually picked our themes for February, for March, for April, for May already. And so as a den leader, I can kind of look at what those themes are and I can look at some of the electives that we have in our program and kind of line those electives up with those themes. Um, and so what we do is we, you know, we pick our, our pack meeting dates for every month. We pick our themes for every month. We pick our outdoor or indoor activities that we want to do as a pack. Um, and then I kind of come back around and I look at that and I, enter in my own stuff. So now I know what dates we're gonna go ice skating. So I can plan around that date to make sure my den can get together um, on, an, on a different weekend. And so kind of pre-planning. So if you haven't planned as a pack your um, next several months as far as dates and themes and indoor and outdoor, that'd be great to do now just so that your dens can go ahead and, and plan around that um, and they can line up you know, some of their activities. So an example of that might be, you know, if you decided that your pack was going to rent out a pool from the park district, well, maybe then you work on some of your, um, you know, your pool electives, your swimming electives, things like that. So moving on from there. Um, so this year, something to mention, um, the Weevils 1 and AOLs are going to be split for next year. So they're not going to be um, Weevils 1 and Weevils 2. It's simply going to be Weevils 1 and then AOLs. And so um, if you are doing electives this spring, um, this winter and this spring, the recommendation from the council is um, because AOLs are not going to be doing the same electives as Weeblos anymore, um, they are recommending that you do this year, if you have Weeblos, Aquanaut, Art Explosion, Aware and Care, Build It, Earth rocks and modular design, and that's because um, you know in years past um, your AOLs and your Weeblos would have the same set of electives. They will not now, and so they're recommending that you go ahead and if you want to do those, do those this year because they're not actually going to get the chance to do them uh, next fall. Um, for your AOLs next year, however, on their end of things, they're going to have engineer into the wild, into the woods, plus 10 other electives. So the recommendation this year is if your Weeblos haven't done engineering into the wild or into the woods, you could save those electives for next year for your AOLs. But again, they're going to have 10 other electives that they're going to be able to do. You only get so much time in the fall and in the winter before they need to cross over to a troop. So you'll want to be selective about um, which electives you plan for that. Um, last, as far as electives, I just like to recommend that everyone allow their electives to run the full length. So 
during the fall, um, so many of us are just, we're focused on getting our adventures done. We want to get our kids to rank. So we, we kind of get those adventures going and we get through the requirements. We meet as often as we can. Um, we kind of chug away. In the winter and in the spring, now that you're done with rank, there's no rush. There's no trying to get everything in. Um, allow your electives to run the full length, which means, you know, if it takes more than one meeting, by golly, let it take more than one meeting. You know, the, the Lion program and the Tire program are probably some of our most, you know, they're, they're, they're our simplest programs that we have. Um, and oftentimes the Lion program, you just, you, you bust out that, you know, adventure in, in one meeting. Um, you can get everything done right then and there, but you don't have to. Um, and so I encourage during the winter and during the spring to really let the kids enjoy those electives and really let them take their full length. And so what I kind of mean by that is, let's say, you know, for um, example, for the lion electives, you have one where they get to garden. Um, you know, let the child, you know, go through the requirements during one meeting and then make sure you do a field trip at the next meeting to a garden center um, and, you know, talk to a gardener, plant some things. Um, Lowe's right now uh, in April, you can sign up to, for them to build a free um, little wooden cart that they can put a little planter in and you can actually go and, and build that with them, um, you know, and so allow them to have fun at a regular scheduled den meeting and then, you know, have your, have your trip have your outdoor adventure, go somewhere else um, to go do the rest of it. Don't make it all happen just in one single night. Um, you know, so moving on from there. This year, um, you are still able to do awards. Next year, we won't have awards. So um, the recommendation right now is this is your last year to get the uh, conservation award as a patch. Moving forward, conservation is actually going to be part of pretty much every den level or every rank level, rather. Um, you know, and so the children will actually be doing conservation every single year. Um, but if you wanted your uh, scouts um, to be able to earn that conservation award, which uh, award which starts at Wolves and goes all the way on up through um, AOLs, they could do that this spring and still get that patch. Um, the next thing would be NOVA. So the NOVA award um, is currently still available um, to be able to be learned at the Cub Scout level. Um, starting next year, however, you will not have NOVA anymore. Um, NOVA is actually going to be built in to the, um, you know, to the year. And so the children are going to be able to do NOVA as an elective. So basically what they've done is they've taken NOVA apart broken it down, um, and the children will be able to do it as STEM adventures um, throughout some of their electives. And so this year, if you wanted your, um, you know, any of your scouts to be able to earn a, no, a NOVA award with the patch and the pins that go along with it, they could certainly um, earn it this year. The only kicker with the NOVA program is that it's hard to get the patches and the pins. Um, class B does offer the, um, you can get the pins through them and you may also be able to get the patches. I know that um, we were, some of the some of the shops still have those patches. Some of them can order them through each other um, because some, you know, some areas are still heavily um, doing NOVA or they still have supplies. So the only thing with doing NOVA is getting the patches and getting the pins. Um, the religious emblem is not going away. Um, you will still have um, the ability to earn the religious emblem, whether it's this year or next year. Um, but the religious emblem is a great thing for your scouts to be able to earn because they're able to have that emblem on their uniform, um, not only now, but all the way up through the troop level um, and all the way up through adult. Um, they can still they can still have that on their uniform. Um, and it's one of those 
really prideful moments. Um, some kids will get them, you know, some scouts will get them awarded on Scout Sunday, um, you know, or later on in the year, but it's still another way for you to be able to fill your um, winter and spring if you're looking for something outside of electives, um, you know, to do. Um, so next year, we talked about they're not going to have awards. Next year, they're going to have electives. So many electives, you won't even imagine. There's there's at least 20 electives um, per rank that your scouts will be able to do. So you're going to have a wide variety of different things for your scouts to be able to enjoy um, come next, uh, well, as soon as June. Um, but for this year, um, focusing on some of those electives, um, you know, for those Weevils or AOLs that they're not going to necessarily have one versus the other um, between this year and next year um, is a great choice. Moving on from there, um, there are so many activities that you can do as a pack and you can do as a den. Um, not every den meeting has to be about advancement. Not every den meeting has to be about earning an adventure. Some of it can just be fun. Some of it can be related to NOVA. Some of it can be related to electives, um, you know, and, and so it's important to be able to keep the fun in scouting, right? Um, the kids are, in scouting for a reason. They are in this so that they are able to really, you know, enjoy and have fun and get together and be outdoors. And so um, making sure that we're not just having den meetings that are stagnant and just at somebody's house every week or at the library every week, but getting out there um, and having some additional adventure. So at this time of year, I remind everybody, you know what? the children, the scouts, they absolutely love a winter hike. We might be scared of doing a winter hike at this time of year because we're worried about the cold or we think we're all just going to be uncomfortable. You know, I look outside when it snows and I really have no desire to build a snowman. Um, but the children, they, you know, they, the kids absolutely love getting outside. They absolutely love being able to go on those hikes. Um, and a winter hike for our scouts has always just been kind of this mystical thing um, where they have just absolutely loved trudging through the snow and seeing what they see um, when they might not otherwise during the rest of the season. Uh, some other things to be aware of, our local forest reserves, um, DuPage especially, um, and Cook County does as well, um, at their nature centers, they actually have um, presentations that they can do for scouts. They also have uh, electives that they can teach for you. Um, so like into the woods, um, you know, they're able to actually teach that or fur feathers and ferns. So if you're, um, if you're looking for something for your scouts to do, the forest reserves do great presentations on these. And sometimes it's great to just have another voice, another adult um, be able to kind of teach those things and present them in just a new and interesting way. Uh, we talked about going to the pool, right? Um, our pack actually just did a um, uh, a pool event uh, through our park district in December, and we got to have the entire pool. They charged us forty dollars just to be able to have lifeguards there, um, but otherwise it was free. So always talk to your park districts about whether or not they're willing to partner with scouts in the community. Um, and our scouts were able to go, and we were able to get Aquanaut done. We were able to do swim tests for Weeblos, um, you know, and have them practice that so that they were ready for summer camp. Um, so that was huge for a lot of our scouts and they really felt, you know, quite proud of it. Um, we even had some of our troop level scouts come as well and practice their swim tests or practice some of their skills. Um, and so that was just a really fantastic event. Um, for us, what we have coming up is we actually have ice skating coming up in February. But you also have, you have roller skating, you have bowling, um, you know, getting the kids out to just do something kind of outside of scouting, something that's just kind of fun to be able to do. Um, our park districts uh, and our schools allow us to use the indoor gyms. So never be afraid to ask your park district or your, um, your schools to see if you can do the indoor gyms so you guys can get maybe some physical fitness done or some games. Um, you know, there's plenty of levels in Scouts 
where uh, weeblows or bears have to be able to show a younger scout how to do something. It might be playing a game. Um, it might be, um, you know, learning something new. And so in, using those indoor gym spaces is sometimes fantastic to get those groups together. Uh, don't underestimate the Cub Carnival. I know a lot of uh, den leaders kind of look at the Cub Carnival in the book and they go, holy cow, I, I don't know that I want to do that elective. Um, but the Cub Carnival is actually really fun for the entire pack. And so something that your pack can, can consider is having your um, each of your den leaders have your um each group come up with a game and have them each bring that game, you know, to a gym, right? Or something like that and set up a cub carnival. And if each of your dens bring a game or two games or three games, just kind of depending on what the sizes of your dens are, um, you guys can have a really, really awesome cub carnival. And what we've done in the past um, is we've had our parents um, volunteer to bring things. So we had their parents bring cotton candy, um, we had parents bring popcorn, we had parents bring um, juice boxes or pop, um, we had them uh, bring prizes. So we had some parents sign up to get like prizes from Oriental Trading. So as the kids went through um, each of the games at the carnival, um, they just, you know, they were able to, uh, you know, to get prizes and whatnot. And that event was really successful. Um, and the kids absolutely loved it. We had our um, bears showing our uh, wolves how to play games and lions how to play games. So they were um, learning that leadership skill as well. Um, and then Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, ha you've probably heard of this before, but they have tons of free sessions um, where you're able to come in and build. Um, and so, you know, you have some things like build it, right? Um, some electives that focus on building, um, but you have other times where it's just really exciting for the kids to be able to go in for the scouts to be able to learn some of those skills. Again, from someone else um, outside of you as their dumb leader or you as their parent, um, for them to be able to come together and build kits together. Sometimes that's just a really great time. Uh, our den. Um, so one of the exciting things actually coming to us next year is biking, cycling. So uh, next year, all of the um, ranks will have a level of biking. Um, and so, you know, everything from tricycles to bike safety, um, you know, going all the way up to, to you know, doing longer biking sessions. Um, they, uh, they actually have that coming to us next year. But for this year, you know what, there's, I think there's one elective in the whole program on, on cycling, but that shouldn't hold you back from, from having lions all the way to Weeblos, um, you know, going out and, and cycling this spring um, and learning some of those uh, safety, you know, safety measures and things like that. Um, museum sleepovers. So it's, it might be too late for you, but you might still have time to be able to sign up. Um, a lot of our Chicago area um, museums, not a lot, a few, maybe three, I think, um, do museum sleepovers. So our pack is actually going to be doing um, a sleepover at the Museum of Science and Industry um, coming up in, I think, March is when we're doing it. Um, and these are the kind of events that our scouts remember forever. Um, you know, these are the memories that our scouts have that is just like that crazy thing that you went and did. You went and, you know, last year we did the field museum. So kids were able to talk about how they slept under dinosaurs um, and slept in exhibits. And it was just the most exciting thing ever. Um, so definitely, you know, if you if you've never done it, look into museum sleepovers or put it on your docket for next year. Um, I recommend if you're gonna do a museum sleepover, really get that plan um, going no later than like November or December, um, you know, to be able to kind of get on the list because the, the sign up opens up and then it fills up pretty quickly. But it can be a really a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and then tours. I know probably a lot of our dens already go um, to fire departments and police departments, um, but if you don't, those are huge with scouts. Um, we've actually done our police department here um, in Lamont a couple of times and the kids think it's just, I mean, our, our police department here is, is pretty low key. 
We, they don't really have anybody in it when we go, um, you know, so it's pretty safe for the kids to be able to just, you know, um, get a tour throughout the building, be able to see, you know, every, every inch of the place. And they just think it's just absolutely um, amazing and astounding, um, all the things that they see. But um, definitely the fire department, definitely farms and zoos, right? Um, both farms and zoos do also um, help with various programs. Um, to be able to show you and various, um, you know, learning experiences. And don't ever be afraid to reach out to one of these places and say, hey, I have this elective where, you know, my scout needs to learn something about animals. Is there anyone that would be willing to talk to them, um, you know, for a little bit about this? And you'd be amazed how exciting a lot of these places are to be able to get the chance to just talk to your scouts um, about some of the things that they do. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of that? I know I just, I go and I go and I go sometimes and I forget to stop. Okay. Um, moving on from there. So uh, Pat was talking about um, the new Cub Scout advancement. Um, the, he is going to have some advancement seminars that are going to focus on um, some of that that is coming up, as he already mentioned. Um, but I also wanted to mention the um, Cub Chat Live. So on Facebook, um, Cub Chat Live has been um, streaming various FAQ sessions and they've been having various broadcasts where they've been actually talking about the new program um, coming up. And so I've actually found it to be very um, helpful to be able to listen to some of what they've had to say, um, to get a few more details about the program. Um, and so if you uh, if you need this, this is actually on the, um, uh, on the district website. So if you wanted to um, you know, go, to, go to Pathways um, website, you'll be able to see this there as well, um, or you know, feel free to take a screenshot or whatnot. Um, but uh, I definitely wanted to share this with you guys so that you can um, kind of get uh, get on some of those future sessions. And they do have all of these videos, all of these Cub Chats um, saved. So you can actually go back and watch the ones that they've already done um, to be able to get a little bit more information about what's to come. Um, beyond that, like Pat said, these are the dates for the seminars that he's going to be having um, coming up in May, August, and October. Um, you know, so I'm sure that, um, you know, you'll definitely want to jump on those as we kind of all navigate this. Um, but uh, that's, that's what I have. So do you, uh, does anyone have any questions about anything? Does anyone need any assistance with anything? Okay, fantastic. Well, um, if you do, you know, want to reach out to me at all, um, you know, please feel free to, you know, Pat has my information, um, but uh, my email is Bethy, so B-E-T-H-Y at C-H-U-C-H-L-A dot com. You're welcome. Just ask me some things, you know, how did, what did you do for the Cub Carnival? What did you guys do for this? What did you guys do for that? Um, I'm happy to be able to share with you any resources that I have um, or any, um, any guidance that I can help with. So thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, and just final, if anybody has any questions. All right. Fantastic. Then I will go ahead and let everybody get on with their night. Um, I hope everyone enjoys their evening. Bye now. Thank you very much. Welcome.